Hi everyone, let us discuss this theorem. So in this theorem, we are going to prove if you have any compact matrix space, then closed subset of a compact matrix space is always compact. So this thing we are going to prove in this theorem. So let us start with, uh, start with the given information. What they have given to us, XD is a compact matrix space. So let me write here. So we have, we have a compact matrix space XD and they are given Y is a subset of X, Y is subset of X. So they given the information that Y is closed and Y is closed. Okay, so Y is a closed subset of X and we have to prove that it is compact. So to prove that Y is compact okay so what we have to prove that uh, closed subset of a compact matrix space is always compact so here we have a matrix space xd which is compact we have a subset of xd y which is closed and we have to prove that that y is compact so let me draw the diagram so you can easily understand the meaning of it so in this way we have a matrix space xd so suppose this is matrix space xd we have and we have a closed subset y of that matrix space xd right so we have a closed subset y so to prove that that y is compact so let me yes i have written already y is compact so how to prove the any set is compact or any matrix space is compact so we have to prove every open cover has a finite sub cover then we can say yes the given set or given matrix space is compact so same definition i am going to use to prove this one so let us consider any open cover of y so late late script c i will call it as g alpha alpha belongs to lambda b any open cover of y so i am considering any open cover of y so obviously it will cover y so y is equal to union of g alpha alpha belongs to lambda so it's an open cover so that means each set g alpha is an open set so i should mention where where g alpha is an open set it is an open set in y so the last wo few words are very important these are this is uh, g alpha is an open set in y what is meaning of that see let me write here let me write okay so basically if you have a matrix space xd like this and we have a uh, set y which is a subset of x so if you have a set like this, suppose this is G alpha. So it is an open subset of Y. That means actually there is one set, open set H alpha. There is one set H alpha such that H alpha is open in X and intersection of Y and H alpha is this G alpha. Getting the point. So G alpha is open in Y. So therefore, therefore G alpha will be H alpha intersection y where h alpha is an open set open set in x it is an open set in x for all alpha belongs to lambda getting the point so how we get open set in y see g alpha let me show this is a g alpha which is open set in y so how we get open set in y basically we have a open set in x so this H alpha is an open set in X. So when you take intersection of H alpha with Y, then we get an open set in Y. So this is the logic behind it. So that's why I use the same. So G alpha is open set in Y. So G alpha will be formed in this way, H alpha intersection Y, where H alpha is an open set in X, right? So this thing I mentioned. So let me remove this uh, part. So we'll have some more space to write. So basically we wrote here G alpha is H, H alpha intersection Y. So the same thing I can put here. So therefore, okay, let me call it as one. Then one becomes, okay. So let us see what will happen. One becomes Y is equal to union. Okay, union alpha belongs to lambda, right? So G alpha means H alpha intersection Y, right? So we can take separate, separate union, let us take. So this is equal to union H alpha, alpha belongs to lambda. See that Y is independent on alpha. So that's why there is no need to take union of that. So we will have intersection Y. 
सो अवर लेफ्ट हैंड साइड इज वाई गेटिंग सो वाई इज इक्वल टू यूनियन एच अल्फा इंटरसेक्शन वाई सो विल यू टेल मी वॉट कैन वी राइट फ्रॉम दैट जस्ट मिनिट लेट वी टेल यू सी सपोज दिस इज सेट बी ओके दिस इज सेट बी एंड वी हैव अ सेट ए विच इज सबसेट ऑफ बी वी हैव अ सेट बी एंड ए इज अ सबसेट ऑफ बी देन वॉट विल बी ए इंटरसेक्शन बी विल यू टेल मी वॉट इज कॉमन इन ए एंड बी ऑब्वियसली इट इज ए बिकॉज ए इज सबसेट ऑफ बी गेटिंग ए इज सबसेट ऑफ बी सो दैट्स वाई कॉमन पार्ट बिटवीन ए एंड बी इज ए इट सेल्फ सो सिमिलरली सेम टाइप ऑफ थिंग वी गॉट हियर कैन यू सी एट अ प्लेस ऑफ वाई वी हैव ए एट अ प्लेस ऑफ दिस यूनियन वी हैव बी हियर गेटिंग सो दैट मीन्स ए इंटरसेक्शन बी सी ए इंटरसेक्शन बी इज इक्वल टू ए दैट मीन्स विल यू टेल मी वॉट कैन वी राइट यूजिंग दिस लॉजिक यू सो यूजिंग दिस लॉजिक वी कैन राइट हियर सो देर फोर वाई इज सबसेट ऑफ यूनियन ऑफ एच अल्फा अल्फा बिलोंग्स टू लैमडा यूजिंग दिस लॉजिक वी गॉट दिस वन लेट मी कॉल इट एज टू ओके सो दिस थिंग वी गॉट सी नाउ देर इज नो मोर स्पेस टू राइट सो मेक अ स्क्रीन शॉट ऑफ इट फर्स्ट देन आई विल गो फर्दर सो लेट इज कंटिन्यू नाउ और क्लियरली वी कैन राइट क्लियरली सो नाउ वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट एंटायर मैट्रिक स्पेस एक्स यू कैन सी दिस एंटायर मैट्रिक स्पेस एक्स सो नाउ सिंपली टेल मी कैन आई राइट इन दिस वे एक्स इज इक्वल टू वाई यूनियन वाई कॉम्प्लीमेंट इट्स ऑब्वियस नो वाई दिस वाई एंड कॉम्प्लीमेंट ऑफ वाई दैट मीन्स द रेस्ट ऑफ दिस पार्ट गेटिंग सो वाई यूनियन इट्स कॉम्प्लीमेंट दैट इज नथिंग बट अ एंटायर मैट्रिक स्पेस एक्स सो दिस इज ऑब्वियस थिंग आई रोड हियर बट सी जस्ट नाउ इन टू इन स्टेटमेंट नंबर टू वी हैव रिटर्न वाई सबसेट ऑफ दिस यूनियन सो आई कैन यूज दिस टू हियर ओके सो दिस इज इक्वल टू यू कैन राइट सो वाई सबसेट ऑफ यूनियन सो इट इज इक्वल टू यूनियन एच अल्फा अल्फा बिलोंग्स टू लैमडा गेटिंग यूनियन वाई कॉम्प्लीमेंट आई शुड मैंशन फ्रॉम टू फ्रॉम टू एक्चुअली वी हैव अ सबसेट हियर बट नो नीड टू राइट सबसेट वी कैन राइट इक्वेलिटी since we are talking about entire matrix space x so that directly we can write equality see here so union uh, union h alpha uh, union y complement is equal to x this thing we have got right but see here here y is close getting y is close this is a given information close subset y so if y is co close you can easily see the y complement is open so implies y complement is open getting so this is an open set h alpha is basically an open set i have written here h alpha is open so this is an open set each h alpha is open y complement is also open and their union is covering x union is covering x so that's why we can say it's a cover of x so therefore therefore we can write therefore h alpha alpha belongs to lambda union y complement is a cover but basically each set is open y complement is open as well as h alpha is also open so we can declare it is an open cover of x is an open cover of x okay it is an open cover of x but see they have already mentioned x is compact this is a given information x is compact so x is compact that means it has a finite sub cover getting so we got an open cover but x is compact so let me mention but but x is compact so therefore this cover has finite sub cover let me write here just make a screenshot of it then i will go further so therefore what can we write x is compact so therefore therefore a cover cover let me mention here h alpha alpha belongs to lambda union y complement has finite sub cover okay has finite sub cover say we will call it as h alpha 1 h alpha 2 and so on h alpha n and that y complement getting so we got a finite sub cover so i am calling them as h alpha 1 h alpha 2 h alpha n and y complement that means there are total n plus 1 number of sets and which can cover x so they, uh, therefore therefore x is equal to union h alpha i i running from 1 to n so there are n number of sets union with this y complement 
union with this y complement okay but see uh, a few minutes before i had drawn one diagram here let me write here again so this is matrix space x and we have a subset y closed subset y of x so we have a open cover for x obviously it covers y also since y is a subset of x if any union covers entire matrix space x obviously it covers some part of that also so therefore but i should mention y subset of x therefore therefore y subset of this union also union h alpha i i running from 1 to n union y complement so you can say this is open cover of y also but see y complement that means complement of y get it it does not cover any part of y but but y complement does not cover any part of y it does not cover any part of y so that's why it is not required to cover y so therefore i can simply write therefore y subset of union h alpha i i running from 1 to a that y complement is not required to cover y so that's why i simply omitted that part and i got y subset of union of h alpha i, I running from 1 to n okay let me go further just make a screenshot of it okay so now tell me uh, what can we write using this relation okay see suppose this is set b i will use the same logic which i used few minutes before this is set b this is set a what will be the intersection of a and b it is obviously a since a is a part of b a is a subset of b so the, if you take intersection of a with b obviously it is a so same kind of thing we have here get it so y subset of union so yeah can you can you tell me well, we can write in the same way so will you tell me what i should write here therefore y subset of this one so therefore y is equal to y intersection union i running from 1 to n h alpha i getting i can write in this way since y subset of this one so that's why you, if you take intersection of these two intersection will be obviously y since y is a subset of it uh, now what will i do you can take intersection with uh, intersection of y and h alpha you can take union common see you can take union outside since that y is independent on union getting i so here we can write y intersection h alpha i do you remember few minutes before we had already stated that y intersection h alpha means what it is our g alpha getting we had initially stated that g alpha is equal to y intersection h alpha so this is equal to union i running from 1 to n this is g alpha i g alpha i okay so initially we started with open cover of y we started with open cover of y and we got its finite subcover to cover y so let me mention so therefore therefore i will call it as script c dash so g alpha i i running from 1 to n is a is a finite subcover is a finite subcover of script c of y so we started with open cover of y we call it as script c and finally i got its finite subcover it means every open cover of y has finite subcover so that's why we can declare therefore y is compact therefore y is what compact so in this way we prove that if you have a compact matrix space and if you have a closed subset of a compact matrix space 101 percent it is compact so here we had a compact matrix space xd and we had one more thing that is a y which is a closed subset of x so we proved that it is also compact so in this way we proved the result every closed subset of compact matrix space is compact okay so make a screenshot of it then we will stop thank you see you in next video